Electrons are a very important component of atoms, especially when trying to describe the interactions that occur between different atoms. It's a complex topic, so I'm going to try and move fast to this video, and I may still go over my self-imposed six-minute time limit. To review, electrons have a negative charge, and they are drawn to an atom by the oppositely charged protons that are found in the nucleus of that atom. These electrons occupy spaces known as orbitals, and orbitals are found in a distinct pattern since each electron tries to get as close to the nucleus as it can without bumping into other electrons. Here, you can see that for a hydrogen atom, a single electron is attracted to the lone proton. It occupies an orbit in the first energy level or shell. A helium atom has two protons and has two electrons in the first level orbital. For lithium atoms, with three protons and three electrons, a new energy level is required. The first energy level, which is occupied by the two electrons, has become too crowded. The third electron will occupy an orbital in that second energy level. Although it's easier to visualize these energy levels as orbitals with distinct rings and spaces, remember that these actually represent diffuse clouds where the electron is found. Each orbital is a cloud or space with a different shape and enough space only for two electrons. The first energy level has only one orbital and so, and so it can only fit two electrons. The second energy level, and most energy levels higher than this, have multiple orbitals. Again, these orbitals can accommodate only two electrons and electrons fill these spaces to get as close as they can to the nucleus of the atom, again, without bumping into other electrons. Each row of the periodic table have elements with the same outer energy level. The first row has only one, uh, contains elements that have only one orbital in a single energy level. The second row have four new orbitals found in the second energy level. The quest for electrons to fill certain orbitals drives many, if not all, the interactions between atoms. For example, as was just mentioned, there are four orbitals in the second energy level for an atom. Each one of these orbitals must accommodate a single electron before any is filled with a pair of electrons. It could be helpful to think of an atom as a movie theater or a baseball stadium. The nucleus of the atom is what draws the electrons to that atom, just as the field in the middle of the stadium is what draws the crowd to a ball game. The further out the fans sit, the more space and seats there are available. However, the most desirable seats are closest to the field. For most of the elements important in biology, we will only have to consider the first two energy levels. These levels contain the seats where the electrons can sit. One orbital with two seats in the first energy level, and four orbitals for a total of eight seats in the second energy level. Of course, there are no actual seats for an electron in an atom, only spaces where electrons are found, if they are there at all. If the atom lacked any electrons, there would be no energy level or clouds or spaces set up to receive them. Let's see how these orbitals are filled with an example atom. We'll pick the element nitrogen as an example. Nitrogen has seven protons, and so we can draw a total of seven electrons to this atom. The first two electrons would try and occupy the best seats and fill the first energy level. These are the seats that are closest to the nucleus of the atom. The remaining five electrons will start to fill the second row or second energy level. 
Just as you might prefer spacing out rather than sitting next to strangers if there's seats available, so too do electrons occupy empty orbitals instead of half-filled orbitals. So we can place four of the remaining five electrons, one in each of these four orbitals. Now we only have one electron that still needs a seat. The remaining electron isn't that happy about having to sit next to a stranger, but would rather do so than to sit all the way back in the third row. Therefore, it will occupy one of the orbitals in the second energy level, meaning that for nitrogen in its outermost energy level, there is one filled orbital and three half-filled orbitals. We still have a few empty seats in these half-filled orbitals, even after placing all of the seven electrons that we can naturally draw to nitrogen. Just like stadium owners, atoms do not like to have empty seats. The electrons next to an empty space have two options to pick, two different seats to sit in, and will be restless until these seats are filled. This will make an atom reactive. The atom will do whatever it can to fill those seats, even if it means sharing or stealing electrons from nearby atoms. Atoms will continue to attempt to fill those empty seats until the entire row or energy level is satisfied, even if it means sharing electrons with another atom, here depicted as fans from another team. This is how atoms interact to form connections and chemical bonds. To summarize, atoms are the most stable when their outermost energy level is filled. Unfilled or half-filled orbitals in the outermost energy level makes an atom reactive. Atoms can share electrons to satisfy this demand, or they can either gain or lose electrons completely. Atoms that gain or lose electrons become ions, and they have a net electrical charge. For example, sodium, uh, a atom from the element sodium has 11 protons and can attract 11 electrons. It can fit two of those electrons in the first energy level, eight in the second energy level, and is left with a remainder of one. Rather than have a third energy level with only one electron and many empty seats, sodium has a propensity to lose or donate that extra, extra electron. To another atom so that it may be have a stable or filled outside energy level, that being the second energy level. The arrangement of electrons in the outermost or valence energy level for an atom controls what type of interactions it will make with other atoms and forms the basis for chemical bonds between different atoms. This is how individual atoms can come together to make larger and larger molecules. It is all driven by a desire to either fill or get rid of the empty seats.